This is uh, a couple days before the season closes. I'm just pulling the snares out. Here, I'm going to show you something. Like I said, I think I mentioned you can't leave these things out long. I was here two days ago and uh, had nothing. Now I've got this coyote. And this is how long it takes them doggone ravens to ruin a perfectly good fur. So, anyway. But like I said, here's those power snares. See, they do a real quick job on these coyotes. They work wonderful. Except when the or even screw the whole thing up. So, anyways, I'll head over to the other set. It was a nice looking little coyote, but looks like about half a coyote right now. Okay, um, I know it doesn't look like it, but this is April 10th. I'm gonna scan the bush here. We're out bear baiting. Well, we, I'm out bear baiting right now. Just want to show you basically how I set up a bear bait. I, I put this barrel in last fall, it's a new area. This is a 30 gallon drum, I guess 35 American gallons, however they do it. Fill it up with grease from restaurant fryers. And here you can see I put it in here last fall, and you can see there's still right there one. So the bears had empty it. Emptied it last year, and you got one hair stuck on there to black. Um, I'm not sure, but those tracks there look like we could have had a bear got out last week and wandered by maybe. But but I'm gonna, like that's how much snow there still is here. This is just horrid. I mean, I'm still skidooing. Normally, I'd be quadding in here by now, but that's uh. Four gallon pails of grease that I, I use. Then I'll be bringing in another barrel and it'll be set up over here and it'll have oats mixed with grease in it. This here barrel, you see the 45 gallon drum with a quick connect top on it. And uh, you see the, the hole there, there's four or five holes all the way around the barrel. Inside that barrel is a beaver carcass. And uh, it rots, bugs get in there. You know, flies get in there, hit, lay their eggs, the maggots, and everything. The bears come along and they'll roll that barrel around. It's, it's chained to a tree there. I'm just gonna show you on the bottom of the barrel. You gotta have some system where they uh, lift it all up. See what I got here. There's a big eye bolt, hole drilled through the back. There's a big washer like so on the inside and the nut. Then you strip the threads a little bit so it can't come off. Then as the bears roll it around, this thing just swivels. Just acts like a swivel on a trap chain. And they'll pack this whole area down, rolling that around. So with those uh, three baits there, and this is a nice looking area for bears. They like this heavy bush and uh, back in behind we got some good thick undergrowth. Now my tree stand will be right there. That's directly north. Our prevailing winds come from this way from the west. So I generally like to have the stand downwind but this will be fine there. It's got good front cover in front of the tree stand. It'll be right in that big spruce tree right there. Hey, here we are, I'm out bear baiting. Again, this is April 18th, and you can see I'm still driving the skidoo around. But I just wanted to show you, I know we didn't get any really good clear fisher tracks um, earlier this year. And here, we're up the road uh, to one of my bear baits. And I just wanted to show you, here we got a small lynx track walking right up the road. You can see how you can differentiate them from uh, like canines 
their canines will be more, you see how they go, they're just offset a little bit and uh, fairly close together. Canines will be more in a straight line like that. But these here tracks, there's a fisher has gone up the road this way twice and back this way, but that's what their tracks look like when they're uh, just on their gentle lope. If they were in deeper snow, their feet would have went into the same footprints on that little lope. And there's, uh, of course, some rabbit tracks crossing right there. But lots of fish sign. He's been up and down here three times. Well, that way twice and this way once. Or actually, let me see. No, it's this way twice and this way once. So, what you see in the... Uh, just uh, like the martin, that's what the martin will look like too if you get into the softer or the where there's not really a heck of a lot of snow and they're not moving too fast. So that's kind of cool, lots of fur. It makes me wish this was my trap line. Somebody didn't uh, trap a lot here, I guess, but anyways. Okay, I'm just out in the bush picking up uh, some stuff from deer season that we left at the campsite. You see it all there in the sleigh. And uh, just went around, quick run around the line and check for some sign. And I know I had, when I did the video of, holy man, this is bright. When I did the video of uh, the tracks, I don't think I had any Lynx tracks in here, but so I'll just show you this real quick. Here is Lynx tracks. It's a mother and it looks like either one or two, no, probably just one kitten walking with her and they walked out on the pond there. But you'll see how, I mean, their tracks are very close together. They walk very slow and uh, they're always sneaking. And then of course when you, you'll see them when they go and attack a, a rabbit then they they lengthen out, but they just walked out across this beaver pond here. And you'll see here's some uh, rabbit tracks too. But uh, quite a bit of sign. I've seen, you know, half a dozen Martin tracks. Saw so, uh, two sets of mink tracks of just wolves everywhere, of course, and lots of fox. So the, uh, looks good. I didn't see any otter sign at the creek. But uh, that's not to be expected anyway, so. Anyways, looks good. Good to see some family of lynx here still. being froze up so long. So this guy's come out cut a tree. There's his house right there. You can see there's no open water anywhere so he's got himself a hole through the ice here. And he is cutting up that tree he just cut down trying to get it piece small enough to get under the ice with. There he goes. Oh, he's slowly dragging her down. He's got her. <laughs> well, drag that whole big ass tree over here. Cut her in half and dragged her under the ice. Like you said, the guys are probably running a little short on food. We've been a long time locked up. About uh, well, October 28th since the... Uh, oh no, it was even before that. But anyways, it's a long time. You know, not to mention being that long under the ice with no fresh food, but they also had you know, then another maybe 10 days less time they were able to store food. So, 
I guess they're getting a little hungry. That would be a deadly spot for trap. We'll go take a peek out here. They've been running out here lots, as you can see. But this isn't my trap line. I just want to show you if you can find a spot like this. They've been, I mean, we're a long way from the water here even, so they've got a trail under the ground. It looks like it's probably 60 feet, maybe 40 to 60 feet before you hit water. And so they were going under the ground, under the snow, right under in there. Yes. Okay, I'm hiding behind the building for a minute. Well, just wanted to show you. Rat season closed three days ago. It's April 18th, Good Friday. Happy Easter, everybody. We're supposed to get up to a foot of snow today. And overnight, so. Anyways, this is just lovely. 